Good morning, brothers and sisters and friends.、Um, welcome to the English service of the Silicon Valley Alliance Church.、Um, I'm so glad that we're able to connect virtually this morning、um, to worship together.、Um, in this season of Lent, I am going back to read the book of Matthew, and to me, it's like going back in time、um, to reread the stories of Jesus' time on Earth. And to relive the journey that he once walked with us、um, as a human,、um, I have to say I'm still very amazed by Jesus's humbleness in serving the needy, his his reaching out, his his firmness in facing and defeating temptations, his persistence in face of trials, and his ultimate obedience、um, to the Father to follow、um, his will. It is just so touching to see his love and compassion to its people, that he even bare our sins to die on the cross on our behalf, so that we are spared. He is truly a God that gives us this、uh, gift of salvation. And、um, sometimes I think to myself, I'm not sure, I'm not confident if I myself or even any one of us here would have this courage and love to do this. Um, so I want to share this passage、um, as a call to worship this morning. So in the book of Psalm, chapter twenty-eight, verse six to nine, it says, "Praise be to the Lord, for He has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield." My heart trusts in Him, and He helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise Him. The Lord is the strength of His people, a fortress of salvation for His anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd, and carry them forever. Let's all pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we we thank you. We thank you for giving us this chance to come together, to bring praises to you in our hearts and in our worship today. We thank you for Lent, Lord,、um, that during Lent we are reminded of our struggles and mortality. But we also want to thank you for Jesus, because you sent him to come to walk with us. As we endure the pain of seeing Jesus suffer for us, Lord, may we also find and experience new depths and dimensions of love that you have for us. Lord, we we praise you for your power in conquering death. We praise your powers, and、um, rising from death to life again. And we just pray that we're not just、um, reading, and we're not just like only giving things up for Lent, but that we would also find ways to give glory through Lent, Lord. And this morning, may you find joy in our voices, and、um, in our music,、um, not just today, but every day, Lord. And may our actions, our behaviors, our words, and our heart、um, would do things and bring praises and glory to you, Lord.、And、we thank you and we praise you in all of it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Which mother 
chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon that cross my sins upon his shoulders ashamed I hear my mocking voice called out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but I will boast in Jesus Christ his death and resurrection why should I gain from his reward I cannot give an but this I know with all my heart His words have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know have paid my ransom but this I know with all my heart his wounds have paid my ransom How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine? So great a mercy What heart could fathom Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And to bear my shame The cross has spoken I am forgiven the King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living home. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah.
its grip on me You have broken every chain The salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Then came the morning That sealed the promise Your buried body Began to breathe out in the silence. The roaring lion declared, The grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to. In the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 36 to 39, it says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Faith to bear that cross, to bear my. 
my sin, what wondrous love, my hope is sure. When there my Savior prayed, Father, not my will, but yours be done.
brothers and sisters, we, we want to welcome you uh, to uh, join us uh, to worship online with the Silicon Valley Alliance Church English Worship. I want to, uh, on behalf of the church, once again thank you, brothers and sisters, for your participation uh, yesterday. We have about 23 to 25, close to 30 brothers and sisters uh, join hands together to come to the church and uh, help to serve our community uh, in this uh, food pantry. So I want to uh, thank you. And I want to thank also many of you uh, who are praying for us at home and uh, you have uh, uh, gear, uh, given to support this ministry. So please continue to pray. Uh, yesterday is the second time uh, that we try to promote this alpha parenting. So pray that uh, many of these families who have kids uh, would be willing to uh, come and join us so that we can build a closer relationship with them eventually uh, to lead them uh, to Christ. So this is uh, something uh, that is very uh, important in the heart. So please uh, continue to pray specific specifically for that. I also want to remind you, and uh, as you have uh, seen uh, on our video announcements, uh, the four uh, circle with uh, four different colors. Maybe you don't pay too much attention to it, but actually it's intentional. Uh, that four colors uh, is the four colors from uh, uh, SVAC logo that uh, represent uh, Christ as Savior, Sanctifier, Coming King, and Healer. And this is also uh, the fourfold gospel of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. And I just want you to remember... Uh, we are Christ Center X18 family. And uh, today, let's uh, join our heart together as we prepare our heart to listen uh, to God's word. Let's uh, pray together. Father, as we come before you, we thank you for relationship, the relationship we can have in you. And as we are reminded by Paul that uh, if anyone is in Christ, we are the new creation. The old has gone and the new is here. And not only that, Lord, uh, you reconcile us with you. You also entrusted us uh, with uh, this message and responsibility to reconcile uh, the world uh, with you. And so, Lord, I uh, just pray that you continue to uh, help us to uh, keep this uh, uh, fire burning in us so that we want to see more people come to know you. And Father, as we come together in this very special uh, Family Ministry Sunday, we want to pray especially for uh, families. And Lord, as you know, under this uh, shelter in place, uh, it added additional burden uh, to many, many families. Uh, when everybody is at home, and I uh, just pray that Lord, you continue to help us to uh, optimize this uh, unusual uh, time of bonding. And Lord, to help us to uh, resolve conflict. And help us to uh, uh, ponder on this, uh, uh, your ministry of reconciliation. So Lord, we pray for our families. We pray that Lord, uh, you uh, raise up more families that is Christ-centered. And Lord, I pray that you help us to have patience as we uh, focus on communication this uh, year. Just pray that Lord, you help us. You uh, enhance our ability, our willingness to listen and you enhance our ability uh, to communicate, whether it's between husband and wife or parents to our kids. Just pray that, Lord, uh, you bring forth harmony, and, uh, Lord, you just uh, bless our family and you protect our family. And, Father, as uh, we uh, ponder upon the families in SVAC, I want to pray specifically uh, for family that, has, uh, that is going through uh, members that is really sick, Lord, I pray for your healing. I pray that you extend your mighty hand to touch upon uh, this uh, uh, brother who is uh, very, very sick. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you will also surround this uh, family with your love and you enable them to go through this difficult time. Father, I thank you for uh, SVAC uh, brothers and sisters who surround this family with great love. And may you continue to uh, uh, bless this family and uh, you bring forth healing. Father, I want to also pray for uh, our, our family uh, or, or our brothers and sisters who are mourning uh, the loss of loved one. Lord, you continue to be with them. You, uh, again, strengthen them. And uh, Lord, uh, you uh, uh, remind them of the hope they can have in you. Yes, even in the face of death, we can still have hope in you for you are the living God. Christ has risen. And for this reason, we are here today to uh, celebrate to remember the hope Christ's resurrection uh, has for us. And Father, as we continue 
uh, to prepare heart, to listen to your word. I'm also thankful that you have allowed us to continue uh, to uh, participate in your ministry. Thank you for uh, allowing us to uh, bring before you the, the tithes and offering. And Father, we just want to commit these resources to you and uh, we pray that you set this apart for, to, for the furtherance of your kingdom. And Lord, I pray your blessing upon those who give cheerfully. Lord, as we prepare our heart to uh, listen to your word, may you speak to our heart. In Christ's name, we pray. And now let's prepare our heart as Pastor Warwick come uh, to uh, speak to us in this uh, very special family ministry uh, Sunday. Uh, he will talk about fam family harmony uh, looking from uh, 2 Peter, 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 8 to 12. And uh, so let's uh, give him uh, undivided attention. Good morning and uh, welcome to uh, Silicon Valley Alliance Church. Uh, as you may have been following us uh, past many number of weeks, uh, we have been uh, going through different uh, accounts of Jesus uh, in the Gospels. But today we are doing something a little bit differently. Uh, we are um, celebrating uh, a family ministry Sunday. And so today we're going to be having a special message uh, dealing with families and how they are to relate with one another, as well as how they are to communicate with each other. Uh, we know that in any family situation, uh, there are often a lot of conflicts. There's a lot of uh, problems, a lot of arguments. And I know, especially during this past year, uh, during this uh, COVID season, when most of us are experiencing uh, shelter in place, it has only caused these problems to, to escalate even further. Uh, now, for a lot of these people that are you know, together uh, in your families, you know, for some, things have improved a lot. People appreciate the, the time together, the extra time that they are able to, uh, to spend quality time uh, with each other. On the other hand, I think a lot of people, and perhaps most of us, we find that as we spend more and more time together, there's more and more problems that come up. Uh, we get tired of each other's faces. We get tired of each other's voices. Uh, we get tired of each other's habits. And so the time together has really created um, a division and, 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 and so many conflicts between members of the same household, between you know, different members of the, fam uh, of the families. And a lot of us, we find that maintaining good relationships in the family is, is very challenging, if not impossible. Now, none of us, I'm pretty sure, delight in conflict. We don't, we don't desire for, for problems to occur uh, in, our, in our families. We prefer peace. We prefer that things are going pretty smoothly. We prefer unity and, and, and harmony. But due to the, uh, the fallen nature, uh, uh, the sin nature of, of, of people, um, conflict does occur and it is inev inevitable. And so one of the things that we want to talk about today is how should we relate and communicate with our families. So we're going to be uh, skipping away from the Gospels for uh, this uh, weekend, and we're going to be instead looking at a passage in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 to 12, and we're going to explore this idea of family harmony. Uh, so if you have your Bibles with you, uh, I encourage you to uh, turn there right now. Uh, if not, you can look on your a phone or your smart uh, devices, or you can follow along uh, on the screen uh, as well. So we're going to be looking at First Peter chapter three, verses eight to twelve, and it says, "Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult." with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to you or because to this uh, you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. 
For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So if we are to have good relationships and good communication uh, within members of our own families, there's a few important things that we uh, need to see uh, in, this, in this passage. And one of the first things that we need to see is that we need to have uh, a right attitude when it comes to dealing uh, with people in our family. Um, in verse 8, it says, Finally, all of you. Uh, this word finally kind of sums up what has gone before uh, 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 these verses. Uh, right before uh, uh, First Peter chapter three verse eight. Uh, you know, Peter had begun a uh, a discussion, uh, which began in First Peter chapter two verse eleven, and he began this discussion talking about how followers of Christ ought to be relating to to society and to the world, uh, uh, and how we are, are supposed to be uh, living. And so it says in, in, uh, in the earlier chapter, it says, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. So he begins to, uh, uh, after these two verses, he begins to, to talk about how we are to relate to different people within uh, different circles of our relationships, whether uh, you know, it's, it's with our boss or you know, with our, our spouse. And now when we come to 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 8, uh, he sums up everything by saying that we all need to deal uh, with all people in the same manner. Um, and there are five attributes that we can see uh, in verse 8 when it comes to not only dealing with people in this world, but I think it's especially true when it comes to dealing with people uh, within the family. Um, I know that when we, when we deal with uh, people outside, our, you know, our friends, classmates, uh, co-workers, people, our church, a lot of times we are you know, much more gracious. We are much more kind uh, towards these people. We are much more generous towards strangers, uh, slow to, to say anything negative than when it comes to uh, dealing with our own uh, family members. But Peter says that uh, it doesn't matter whether these people are you know, on the outside, uh, whether they're at church, uh, whether they're you know within your family, we need to deal with them in the same way, and so I think it's very important that as we look at these these five uh, uh, attitudes that we're supposed to ha to have these five uh, att uh, attributes, um, it's it's really important to think about how uh, we can apply these uh, within the family uh, structure, um, and so when it comes to having a good relationship or even trying to fix the relationships within our own family structure, we need to begin with the right attitude. Now, uh, because of time, I'm not going to be spending a lot, of uh, a lot of details in each of these uh, attributes, uh, but I'm going to be kind of briefly going over uh, each one. <clears throat> so the first one that Peter says is to be like-minded. It means that we uh, need to have an, an attitude and an outlook of, of harmony with each other uh, within the family, that we need to uh, be in not necessarily agreement with everything that everybody is saying uh, or doing, but just trying to have this sense of, of, of harmony within uh, the family, not trying to create strife. Uh, second of all, Peter says that we need to be sympathetic uh, this word uh, sympathetic means to, to suffer with. Uh, it means that we uh, identify 
or, or empathize with those that are either going through a good time or going through a bad time. Uh, it means that when someone in, in our family uh, receives good news or bad news or going through a, a, a hard time or a good time, we are to, uh, to be able to, to relate uh, with them, uh, not just to uh, not care at all or you know, have the opposite sort of uh, reaction to, to what they're experiencing. So we are to be sympathetic. Third of all, Peter says that we are to, to love one another. Uh, in, this, in this sense of the word love, it means to, to have this, this brotherly love that we are to, to treat these family members like our best friend. And this is something uh, that Jesus commanded of his disciples that they are to, to love uh, people and they are to love uh, one another. Uh, oftentimes it is said that uh, we don't get to choose our family members, that we, we would rather choose our friends and you know, love the people that we like. But Peter says here that, no, we are to, to love one another, even though we may not have necessarily ch chosen who belongs in our family, but we are to, to love them as we love our best friends. Number four says to be compassionate. Now, this word originally used to kind of signify uh, the, the intestines or the uh, vital organs uh, of the body. And what it means is that uh, they used to believe that the, the deepest emotions that we have comes from within, comes uh, internally. And so when, when we have these intense emotions from within uh, the body, it means that we ought to have a, a deep concern or deep compassion for the people that are in our family, that uh, if they're going through, through troubles, uh, we need to, to be concerned for them. We need to show compassion for what they're going through. And then lastly, Peter says that we need to have an attitude of humbleness. Now, being humble means to... Uh, to have a, 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 a low sense of the mind. Uh, it is a recognition of our, our own weakness uh, and also our limitations. Um, it, it means that when people in your family are, are, are struggling uh, or they're doing something that's uh, maybe beneath you, you don't gloat over them. You don't show that you know, you don't you don't tell them that hey, how come you know you're you're so so weak? How come I'm so much better than you? So we don't show an attitude of of pride in that situation, but instead we are to to be humble uh, with our family members. Now, with all of these things, um, you know, whether it's uh, being like minded or sympathetic or loving one another or showing compassion and uh, you know showing uh, humility. Uh, you know, people might often think to themselves, well, do I, do I really need to have these attitudes? Um, you know, is that really that important uh, in maintaining a, a good family? And a lot of times I can tell you that when people deal with tough situations, um, oftentimes they'll, they'll, they'll wish or maybe they'll, they'll hope that if things were to change, if maybe I had a different parent, or maybe if my kids were, were different or I had a different sibling, then maybe I, I wouldn't need to, to have these right attitudes in order to, to deal with uh, my family members. But Peter is saying that to all of us, regardless of, uh, of what your family situation, uh, what your situ uh, family situation uh, is like, uh, we need to exhibit all of these all of these things because it is not the the absence of problems in our family that's going to change your life or change your situation. It is the attitude that we bring to the family that will change the situation. Um, I remember one time my wife and I, and you know we we like to run a lot. Uh, but uh, my wife's more uh, of a person who enjoys running on the road. And I spent a lot of time running uh, on the trails in the, in the mountains somewhere. But I remember one time my wife and I were 
uh, were running on, on the trails somewhere. And uh, there was this one particular stretch, which I had forgotten about, was uphill. And it was uphill for many, many miles. And I had forgotten how steep it was and how long it was. And it happened to be you know, very hot that day as well. And so my wife, she was not used to running on trails or running on uh, hilly kind of situations. And there would be times where she would be telling me, wow, you know, it's, it's steep, it's long, it's hot. And as I was running alongside her, I would tell her, you have to enjoy the situation. You know, just because, cause, just because you, you, you say that it's long and it's steep and it's hot, it doesn't, it, it's not going to change uh, the circumstances. So, you know, so I told her, you know, one of the things that they have in, in running is that sometimes you just have to embrace the suck. And, 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 and as I was running, uh, you know, with her, I said, look, there's so many things to enjoy. We get to enjoy the great outdoor. Uh, we get to enjoy God's creation. You know, where else can you, can you see some of these, some of these views? You get to enjoy some of the training that you're going through uh, right now, and, and nobody can take those things away from you. Now, for her and for me, we're going through the exact same scenario. Um, it's not that it was that much easier for me, or the hills were less steep, or that it was less hot or less long. All, all these circumstances, they were exactly the same for me, except that I had a different attitude when it came to running on these hills. And so, when we think about the difficult family situations that we're in, just because we, we long for a change of scenery or we long for different family members, it doesn't mean that things will necessarily change in your life. But instead, Peter says, regardless of what, what situation you're in, uh, you're in, let's not hope for a different scenario or different family, but instead, let's put on the right attitude instead. And of course, who else models this better than Jesus Christ himself? Who else can do this better than him? So no matter how difficult the situation you may find yourselves in, we need to model uh, what, Christ, um, the, uh, what, what Christ was able to do when he was, when he was here. Uh, we need to model the attitude uh, of Christ in every situation. And so I, I, I hope that uh, as you're thinking about uh, how you can be more like-minded or how, or how you can be more sympathetic or loving or more compassionate and more humble with your family members, uh, I pray that these are things that you can change regarding your attitude because when it comes to relating well and communicating well with our family members, we need to begin with the right attitude. And if the right attitude is a, is a great beginning, um, we also need to have a right response uh, as well. Uh, you know, just because you have the right attitude doesn't mean that we will res respond in the correct way or in the manner that God desires. <clears throat> and so in verse 9, uh, Peter says that, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. And what Peter is simply saying here is that no matter how you're treated or uh, no matter how unfairly uh, you know, somebody may be uh, dealing with you, he says, do not retaliate. Do not give them what you think they deserve. Uh, just because... Uh, you think retaliation is the right response or that they deserve something uh, bad doesn't mean that this is something you ought to be doing or that you have the right to do. You know, Peter says, uh, do not repay evil with evil. And then he takes it a step further with the, with the second part of, of the sentence. It says, uh, do not repay insult with insult. So not only are we not to retaliate with our, our actions, but he also says, do not retaliate uh, with our words. And I think a lot of us, when we are dealing with our, our family members, it is easy to, to, uh, to do the wrong thing. It is easy to say something that's negative. 
Uh, and I know some of you guys might be thinking to yourself that, well, you know, I never, I never say those things or I never do anything bad to, to my family members. But I think even when we do something small, uh, you know, for example, being uh, passive aggressive, um, or maybe we don't say anything super insulting or super negative, but we say something um, kind of to, to downplay uh, the other person's accomplishments or even to, to slight that person, even as, in the smallest bit. I consider that to be repaying evil with evil and insult with insult. And so Peter says, we, we are not to do any of these things, no matter how good it may feel at that moment. And I, I know a lot of us, we, 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 just, we just have that strong inclination to, to say those things and to do those things because we think that the other person deserves it and it makes us feel good. So if we are not to repay evil with evil or insult with insult, what should we do? And Peter goes on to say that on the contrary, <clears throat> repay evil with blessing. What does, it, what does it mean to repay evil with blessing? Now this word blessing, it means uh, generally speaking to, uh, to simply speak good uh, of a person uh, or if we were to use it of God, uh, for God to give something good or do something good, you know, for someone. But it's not merely words that are coming out of, you know, one's mouth. Uh, it means that, uh, you know, our will when it comes to thinking about this person and dealing with this person is for their good. We desire, you know, for their good. Uh, so when it comes to our, our families, uh, when, when it says, you know, repay evil with blessing, um, there are people in our families who might be treating us not so well, but instead of, you know, doing evil things and insulting them, uh, blessing them might mean something like giving them, you know, praise. It might be loving them unconditionally. It might be affirming them. Uh, not lying, but affirming them uh, in the things uh, that they are deserving of. It might be speaking well of them, praying not that they would die uh, or that the situation uh, uh, would change dramatically, uh, but that you would uh, pray uh, that, uh, that they would do well uh, in life. How often do we do that? when it comes to people in our families, especially ones that may be giving us difficult times, how often do we pray that they would be blessed by God? Um, a lot of times we, uh, we pray that, um, that bad things would happen to them or maybe uh, that God would take us out of the situation or that they would receive judgment for what they have done. And all these things are, are, are kind of fair. But do you repay evil with blessing? I remember a long time ago, one of the, uh, one of the, the workshops that we had at church, and I think it was held by the, um, <clears throat> the women's ministry from, from the English uh, congregation. Uh, but we had this, uh, this marriage workshop for, for couples. And during this workshop, one of the exercises that we had to do was we had to sit in front of our spouse and we had to look them in the eyes and we had to tell them to their face things that we were thankful about them, things that we affirmed about them, things that we, that we loved about them. And as people were kind of doing this exercise, it was kind of silly at first, but after a while, um, it's, it's really funny that if you were to look within the whole room, there, you, would, you would see that many of the couples, there were, there were tears coming down uh, their eyes. Uh, there were tears coming down uh, their, their faces. And the reason why so many people were, 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 were tearful, not because they were sad or they heard something that they didn't want to hear, but 
many of them were hearing good things about uh, about, about themselves that they hadn't heard either before or frequently in, in, enough. A lot of us, we are so used to uh, repaying evil with evil. We are so used to uh, uh, repaying insults with insults that we are not used to, to giving blessings uh, to, to other people, especially those uh, in, our, in our families. And so when we, when we do receive these words of encouragement or words of, of affirmations, uh, sometimes it, it is too much to, to, to take. But the reason why we, we ought to be doing this, uh, not just doing this one time at a workshop, but more often than that, uh, is because Peter says, uh, to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Um, because our, our future hope is with God, um, because we, we, we will have eternal life with God, our present relationships should be characterized and defined by blessing uh, other people. Now, from time to time, and I, I think I guess even from the beginning of time, uh, people have forgotten what it means to be blessed by God. When we think about blessings, we think about people that deserve blessings, not you know, sinful people, not people that wrong us, uh, not people that uh, don't deserve it. But God has freely blessed us. Uh, he has given us uh, blessing after blessing. Uh, he has given us the gift of salvation, eternal life, things that none of us uh, deserve. And if you think that you deserve all of these things, you are, you are mistaken. None of us uh, have, have merited any of these things from God. Instead, all of us, we, we deserve uh, God's wrath. Uh, we, we deserve judgment from God. But instead of judging us, God chooses to, to bless us. And as people who are blessed by God, we need to in turn bless other people as well, especially those uh, in, our, in our own families. And so blessing and cursing should not come from us simultaneously. It should, it should not flow uh, from our lips. So we need to have the right attitude when it comes to dealing uh, with, our, with our family members because we know that families don't, don't change. Uh, it's not easy to change. Uh, we also need to have the right response uh, when it comes to them because as God has blessed us, we need to bless them uh, as well. But out of these two things, uh, if we want to have the right attitudes and we, have, and we want to have the right response to our family members, we need to also know that we need to have the right motivation as well. We need to be motivated in doing uh, these things. And so we see in uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse uh, 10 to, uh, to 12, that uh, Peter summarizes what he said in verse 9 by quoting uh, from Psalm chapter 34, uh, verses 12 to 16. He, he's telling us that the things that he just said, they're, they're nothing new. God has said these things uh, before. But as, as we look at verse 10, uh, from this is quoted from, like I said, Psalm uh, 34, uh, when he says, "Whoever would love life and see good days, you know, must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech." Now, some people, when they look at this verse, they might say that, "Well, Peter, did he did he change the meaning of what the psalmist David said in, in Psalm 34?" When 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 you see uh, you know, what David said that, you know, if you love life and if you want to see good days, then you are to do all these things. Does, does Peter change the meaning of those words to, as, he, as we would say, to, to spiritualize it? You know, is he, is, he, is he saying that David is only talking about earthly uh, rewards from doing this and Peter is talking about more heavenly kind of rewards. But when we look at this phrase, whoever would love life, 
Um, you know, of course, like David is talking about people that uh, if they want to have a good life on earth, then they would do this. And if they want to see good days on earth, uh, then they would uh, also do this. And, and for Peter, when he's, when he's talking about uh, whoever would love life, he's really talking about life referring to, of course, uh, eternal life and, and, and salvation and uh, loving life. Uh, the one that gives us life is, is God himself. Uh, so we are loving the, uh, the God who gave us this gift of uh, salvation. And, you know, for Peter, seeing good days uh, means that, um, you know, we don't necessarily see good days while here on earth, uh, but we are too, too long for that day where Christ is going to come back and we will see the glory of all things which are unseen right now. But I think Peter and David are both correct in how they uh, use this, uh, uh, this phrase, that whoever would love life and see good days, that is something that happens not only now in the present, but also happens in uh, the future. The blessings that we experience now are also blessings that we experience uh, in the future. Not necessarily in the same way, but uh, Peter goes on to say that in uh, verse 12, one of, the, one of those motivations of, of why we are to, to do these things uh, is so that the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So this is the reminder of why we ought to, uh, why we ought to have the right attitude and why we ought to have <clears throat> the right response when it comes to dealing with uh, with our families, God is watching. Uh, when it, when you see the words, the face of the Lord, um, it's oftentimes used of judgment from uh, from God. Uh, so here, when he says that the face of the Lord is against those who who do evil, he's referring to to judgment. So um, we are motivated to you know to have the right attitude and to have the right response. Uh, because if we don't, we might face the judgment uh, of God, not only in the present, but also in the future uh, as well. Because children of God should not be doing uh, these things. Uh, we should not be retaliating, uh, retaliating against uh, people who do evil uh, against us. We should be actively seeking to bless them uh, instead. But, but, but these words that Peter is is referring to here as he's quoting from Psalm 34 is not all meant to um, discourage us or, or scare us into simply obeying God just because we're fearful of, uh, of judgment from God. He's actually being extremely gracious uh, in, in his words. Um, God is extremely gracious towards us. And right before this verse, uh, maybe something that we might skip over because uh, the second part of this verse is so, so in our face. But it says right before, right before uh, this phrase on judgment, it says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. Now, when you see the eyes of the Lord being talked about here, in contrast to the face of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord usually refers to uh, God's watchfulness. He sees all things, he knows all things, and his eyes are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to uh, their prayers. So he's, he's watching everything, and he's seeing everything, not so much that he wants to, to judge his children, although that course may happen if we are not being obedient uh, to God, if we are not really uh, his children. But because he wants to see those that are acting, acting righteously and he wants to, to, to hear and answer their prayers. So that should be a great motivation uh, for us to, to come to uh, to our families with the right attitude and to respond in the right way. Not because we're scared 
uh, of judgment from God, but because we know that God is watching our righteous actions. We know that God is going to, to be answering our prayers. Maybe not in our uh, time frame, but one day we know that things will be uh, made well. You know, it is, it is easy to, to lose faith in God uh, a lot of times. Um, because in our families, uh, those, those days and weeks and months and years, it can seem very long, very difficult, very painful. Um, sometimes we think that the only way to escape these problems is by, is by, is by running away, is by changing the circumstances, by putting actions into our own hands. And sometimes we may, we, we, we may have no other choices, uh, especially if there's abuse going on. But for, for many of us, uh, that may not always be the case. <clears throat> uh, I remember before when I was uh, much more involved in, in youth ministry, I would talk to many of the youth, uh, you know, especially as they're heading off to, to college, and I would always ask them, you know, where, you know, where do you want to go to school? What are your plans after college? And you know, some of them would share to me that they, that they have really hard times um, you know, dealing with their, their parents, uh, that, they, that they just long to you know, stay in school somewhere far away, never to, to go back uh, home. And remember one of the things I would always tell them is that you know, it doesn't matter where you go, uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether or not you are you know, with their family, you simply take all your problems with you. It, you, you just change the, the, the scenario, the people that you're dealing with. But until you learn to have you know, that right attitude in, in dealing with people that are close to you, you will continue to experience a lot of the same problems that you might experience with your parents. So it is, it is easy for us to... Uh, you know, to argue, to fight, uh, to, to have a lot of conflict with our family members. It is easy for us to have the desire to just run away, to not deal with our families uh, anymore. It is easy for us to avoid awkward conversations. Uh, it is easy to, to lose our mind over relational uh, issues. It is easy for us to avoid all of these uh, problems to avoid seeking help from people that can help us and just to continue to be angry and to hold grudges against people uh, in our household. But if by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the example of Christ, if we are to pursue forgiveness and reconciliation in our relationships uh, because we are motivated uh, in knowing that God hears and sees what his righteous children are doing. And from that, we have the right attitudes in approaching uh, our family members, and we have the right uh, response, then maybe good things will happen eventually. But it's something that we must persevere on, no matter how difficult it is. And even though... Um, um, we didn't read this uh, in uh, 1 Peter 3, uh, 8 to 12 today, but it says uh, a couple verses later uh, in verse 14, as uh, you know, Peter's been talking about suffering and our kind of response to it. He says that, but even if you should suffer for what is right, he says that you are blessed. We all desire to experience the good in life. Um, but the good in life is not only to receive blessings while here on earth, but it is also to, to know God and to make him known to others. And one of the ways that we make him known to others is by the ways that we deal with uh, our families, no matter how, how challenging uh, it may be. Uh, for some of us, uh, we suffer a lot more uh, than other people because we are in ver very tough family situations. But suffering for the sake of Christ, it is a, it is a high calling. Uh, in some ways, uh, it is a privilege uh, as well. When we think about it, you know, Jesus gave us 
an opportunity to respond to him uh, to him when he first came uh, to this earth. But we know that a lot of people rejected him. Uh, they, they crucified him. But instead of just uh, judging these people and even judging us, he came not for the purpose of judging, at least the first time, but he came to give people uh, an opportunity to, to turn to him. Uh, he came not to judge, but to save. Uh, he came to, to, to give God's blessings to people. And for those of us who are, who are saved, who are you know, children of God, uh, we see that God has set a very high standard for us. He expects highly uh, of us. Uh, even though it might seem impossible to us to, to have good relationships uh, with our family members, but because of the grace and the blessings that God has given and shown to us, we are also to give grace and blessings to people, uh, and especially to those in our families. We are to not seek out revenge. We are not to seek out uh, retaliation. We are not to, to curse people in our families, but instead to be a blessing to them. God calls us to engage with our families in the right way. For many of us, the right way, at least in our minds, is the wrong way for God. Um, in Scripture, He gives us and He prescribes to us what it means to have the right attitudes with our families. He gives us um, what it means to, to have the right, res uh, right response in, in dealing with our family members. And he gives us the right motivation as well in being able to, to persevere and to deal with difficult family situations. God calls us to engage with our families in the right way. Every family is flawed, uh, mine included. Um, but one of the things I learned is that flawed families they need God's grace. And God's call for every believer includes loving them and extending grace to them. As much as God has shown us grace, we need to respond to our family with grace uh, as well. We can't be responsible when they, don't, uh, when they don't deal with their own sinfulness, but we can be responsible for our own sins. Uh, we, you know, so deal with your own sins instead of worrying about your family's sins and instead become an instrument of grace and blessing to your family. Let's pray. Uh, for our Lord God, we, we just really come before you. We know that you are a Lord who sees all things and you hear uh, all things. And we so for many of us who, who are having a, a, a difficult time at home, whether it's justified or not, uh, we cry out to you. Uh, we cry out to you, Lord, to, to change um, not simply the, the family dynamics or the, the family situations, but first of all, Lord, would you change us? Would you give us the attitude to, to love and to forgive those in our families that have hurt us, that have not respected us, that have not treated us in a way that we would love uh, to be treated. And we pray that we would be an instrument of grace uh, and peace and blessing to them, uh, not knowing how long it's going to take before things uh, turn around. And we pray, Lord, that as we become these instruments of, of, of grace and blessing to them, that the world would see that the transformative power of, of the Holy Spirit within us can do amazing things, that you are real. And so as we relate with our families in the right way, we pray it also, Lord, that you will be made known to our friends, to our uh, family members outside, um, and even to, to people that don't know us. And so, Lord, we, we do cry out to you and we do ask that you would help us to persevere no matter what family circumstances we may find ourselves in uh, this morning. And so, Lord, we thank you that you 
are a God of grace and that you are a God who blesses us. We praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, sing the song of response uh, before we uh, go into our time of communion together.
let's uh, prepare our hearts uh, as we come to take communion uh, together. Uh, communion is a time, so it's a symbolic way uh, in which we show that we you know, belong to Jesus Christ and we remember what he did for us, what he did for us uh, on the cross. Uh, we are oftentimes you know, forgetful people and we forget um, the, the sacrifice that Christ has, has, has given to us. We forget the, the price that was paid uh, on the cross. And so we, we do this. We come together for this time of communion so that we can remember and celebrate uh, Lord's, our Lord's sacrificial death uh, on the cross. And so I invite you during this time, uh, if you uh, have put your faith in Jesus Christ, to uh, participate uh, together uh, during this time of uh, communion. I also invite you to, uh, to uh, begin to gather your, your elements, your, your bread uh, and your cup before we partake together. And I'm going to be reading a passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 25, uh, as you do all these things. <clears throat> and it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So before we uh, partake together, let's have a moment of reflection. So as we uh, come together to partake in uh, the communion uh, together, uh, the bread symbolizes uh, Christ's body uh, that was broken uh, for us on the cross. Uh, let's uh, partake uh, this together. And the cup symbolizes the blood that was shed on the cross uh, for our behalf uh, so that uh, we have been forgiven uh, for our sins. Let's partake together. And let's uh, pray. 
Uh, for our Lord God, uh, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done uh, uh, for us uh, through Jesus Christ uh, on the cross. Uh, we are thankful that uh, because of what has happened, uh, because of the price that was paid, uh, that you have promised to spare us from eternal death and, and to cover uh, our sins and the consequences of, of our sins through the blood of Christ. Uh, we know that uh, when, the, when, the, when the Israelites uh, experienced uh, their Passover, it was only a glimpse of, uh, of the future glory that was to, to come through, uh, through the cross. And so, Lord, we are, are thankful that uh, because of uh, what happened, because of uh, Jesus' great sacrifice on the cross, that we are able to come to you and that we are able to call you our Father, and have eternal life with you. And so uh, we long for the day when Christ uh, comes back uh, as we reign uh, with him, and we long for the day that we will be with you in heaven forever. We praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's uh, sing the doxology uh, before we receive the benediction uh, together. Let's uh, receive the benediction as we uh, respond to uh, what we have uh, uh, heard the, this morning. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, uh, especially in your families, in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may be uh, one voice glorifying God uh, um, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So once again, we uh, thank you for coming to uh, worship with us uh, this morning. Uh, we hope that you were encouraged by, uh, uh, by God's Word. And uh, if you would like to uh, explore this passage a little bit more, have more time of um, you know, exploration uh, or reflection or application, uh, do go online and download uh, some of the uh, sermon later questions that we have prepared uh, for you. And I uh, just want to remind you that today, um, after all the services, uh, we will be having um, a church-wide prayer meeting online at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, so if you would like the link to that, you can uh, let anybody on, uh, contact anybody uh, from the staff, and we'll be more than happy to share the link uh, with you. Uh, so may you have a great rest of the day. Uh, may God bless you and the, and the rest of this week uh, as well. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.